Hey coders, and welcome to episode two of our JDBC service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this episode, we're going to be learning how to execute SQL statements to our database. Let's cover our terminology before we proceed any further. So in the last episode, we made what's called a connection. Now connection is nothing more than a session between our backend code and database. And once we have that connection, it is a persistent session, which means that for the existence of the program, we do not have to reconnect every time we want to make a new statement. Now a statement is any valid SQL code that we send to our database. So this consists of queries and updates. Now queries and updates are statements, but not all statements are a query or an update. Now first, a query. A query is a statement that returns a results set. Now results set is the results from the query. You can think of a query as basically a read operation. Basically, you're not manipulating the data at all. You just want the data back, returned back to your backend code. And that data is known as the results set. So again, a query is a read and a write operation is called an update. So any statement that updates the database merely just manipulates the data that is called an update it doesn't return any results that there's nothing to return it's just writing to the database so keep these terms in mind for when we proceed into the live demonstration so the top four methods which we'll be covering today are number one create statement execute execute query and execute update so let's hop on in over to the code and put these methods to use. As a quick recap, in our previous episode, we both created and established a connection with our Cloud SQL instance from our App Script editor right here. So here is the instance that we created and we use the connection name in our JDBC URL. And then so we constructed that URL and then used that URL to get our connection. Now, since that time, I have gone in and created a database within our instance, and I can show you that right now. If I say show databases, then you can see that I have created this database Weiss terminal right here. So to actually use that database, what you can do is you can just append a forward slash and then the name of that database that you want to connect to. If you remember in our episode one, we didn't include that because I hadn't, I hadn't created that database yet. But now what we can do is just say forward slash and then the name of the database that we want to interact with right there. All right, so now that we have that connection, we in this video, we want to execute three separate SQL statements. So how can we do that? Well, in order to start sending these SQL statements to our database in the back end right here, we're going to need to first create a statement object. And the way to do that is very simple. You just say let statement equal and then your connection object period create statement right here. Now there's two ways to create statements. You can either say create statement or you can use the prepare statement. We're going to be using the prepare statement in a later episode. So for right now, let's just say create statement. And that's it. All you need to do to create a statement object is just use this method create statement. Now we have our statement object in this variable called statement. Now, just like the connection, it's always good practice to close the statement when you're done using it. So at the very end of my code, I will say statement dot close, just like that. All right, so now we have our statement object. Let's start executing some of these statements. So there are three ways to do it if you just want to execute a single line of SQL. And let me actually comment these out right now. So the first way is just through a general statement. And a general statement can be either a query or it can be an update. So this is, if you just wanna execute a statement, you're not really sure if it's gonna be a query or an update, or you just don't wanna specify, you can do it like this. You can say let result equal, get your statement object, and just use the generic execute statement right here. It just says execute, 
and then it takes one argument and that is a SQL string. So we have three to choose from, but let me choose this first SQL statement right here. So we're going to want to execute now this statement right here, insert into flights, this uh, this row right here. And let me actually just show you what the what the flights um, database looks like so far, or the flights table. So I'll say select everything from flights. And there we go, so we have three records right now in our flights table. And we want to now include one more flight, this one right here from Albuquerque to Los Angeles. So let's go execute that statement right now. If I hit the run button, then it's going to run and it looks like we are returning false. So let's see what that means. So we're logging the result and basically when you execute just a generic general statement using this method right here, execute, the return value of that is going to be true if the statement returned a result set and then false else. So since we were just inserting uh, data into our table, we weren't really asking, we weren't doing a read operation, we were really just doing a write operation, it returned false. There was no result set. And so that was completely expected. Now let's go check to see if that works. So if we go back and run that same command, then here we go, now we have a new record in our flights table and it's exactly what we wanted from this SQL statement right here. So that is one way to execute statements. Another way to do it is through queries. So let me comment that out and let me comment then this in. So if you know that your SQL statement is going to be a query, which means you know it's going to be a read operation then you can use the method statement dot execute query right here. So if, again, if you know it's going to be a query, then you can use this method right here, execute, execute query. So right here we have a query. We're just selecting uh, all of the rows, all of the columns from flights. So let's try to do that right now. So the nice thing about the execute query, specifying that it's going to be a query, is that it will automatically return for you the result set. It, it won't return true or false, it will automatically return for you that result set. So, oops, this is going to be SQL2 because that's what we want. This is our query right here. So now if we save it and run it, we should get the exact same thing that we got right here. And it looks like we did. Now we can go and look at this result set. We're actually going to explore that in the next episode, but you can take my word for it right now. This result set is exactly this right here. So that worked. Again, this has to be a query. So if we if we decided to say execute query on a non-query statement, such as SQL1, and try to run it, then we are going to get an, uh, an error that says cannot issue data manipulation statements with uh, execute query. All right, so again, this has to be a query, but the nice thing about this method is that it will return for you automatically the result set, which comes in handy a lot. All right, the last thing is the update statement. So just like the query statement, if you know that your statement is an update statement, you can specify it by saying let update equal statement dot execute update right here. So again, this has to be an update, but looks like we have one in SQL 3 right here. So let's input that SQL 3. All right, it looks like this is going to return for us the number of rows that were updated. So look at let's look at our SQL statement right here. It says update flights set airline equal to delta where flight ID equals ABC123. If we go back into our database, we have one flight that has that flight ID, so it should return for us just the number one. So let's test that out right now. I'll save project and I'll run it. And there we go, it returned for us one because exactly one row was updated and we can go and confirm that if we run that same query right now we can see that indeed the airline 
of this flight changed from southwest to delta right here. So again, just like the execute query, if you try to put in a, a, uh, a query into the execute update and run it, then it's going to have an error. It's going to say, cannot issue select via execute update or execute large update. Again, these have to be an update. Uh, they have to be an update statement, not a query statement. All right, so those are three different ways that you can send statements to your database. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned something from this episode. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the very next episode.